Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and we're going to get right to it today. There's been tons of questions coming through about brand registry on Amazon and what it is, what it does, what are the requirements, why do I need it, why do I want all the things? I mean, this is the number one question I've been getting recently because Amazon is changing the different different rules. They're trying to protect... Um, help protect bigger brands and of course us smaller brands can then benefit from that as well and it protects some of your listings and things like that if you are a legitimate business and you want to sell on amazon without all the problems and headaches that a lot of other people face brand registry is the way to go now we're going to get into all the questions all the things and what what my personal opinion is after all this time amazon's made some changes of course they're always making changes and so we have to constantly keep up and and um pivot when necessary and or comply when necessary and so I'm going to give you all the what fors and how to of brand registry now if you, this is going to be a brief overview of some qu questions and answers that most people are having right now surrounding brand registry if you want to know the exact steps of how to uh, file for brand registry why why it's important all the different things it's in my wholesale bundle system the whole system it's not just a course y'all this is college level type material here you're talking about this is not just a 101 the wholesale bundle system includes every single thing you need from start to finish to go and sell on Amazon and do wholesale bundling and brand register and have your own brand and private label and all of the things it is a complete system it's not just another course it's a complete system of everything that you need there is no stone left unturned so that you can go to Amazon and you can make good money and you can have all the training at your fingertips the brand registry training is part of Wholesale Bundles 3.0, which is launching in just another month or so. So you can pre-order that and get the Wholesale Bundle System 2.0 right now and start working on it right now. And as soon as 3.0 launches, you will have access to all of the new material as well. I am working hard behind the scenes to make sure everything is brand new, up to date, and you're going to get the best information possible. Plus, of course, new stuff and more complete comprehensive not that it wasn't before because it is it is literally college level semester type stuff you guys this is really this is business that can make you millions and when i say that it's because i have this system has made me millions of dollars and my clients over 20 million dollars in wholesale bundle res revenue that's what the system does. So this is part of the wholesale bundle system. I'm just giving you some answers to some of your burning questions so that you can move forward uh, with your brand registry or consider it or think about these things. The wholesale bundle system is a complete way to get all of the answers that you need and in, in a fast way. Yes, you can get it all for free here on podcasts and YouTube and all that kind of stuff, but it's so, so time consuming to comb through all the little snippets and pieces to get that. So mommyincome.com forward slash system, get the wholesale bundle system, get to work on your training get to work on what you need because you know next year's right around the corner q4 is upon us right it's cub so this is how we all get ready and this is how we can do that so mommyandcom slash system now let's talk about brand registry all of your q a all this stuff i'm just gonna be reading questions that clients and students and podcast listeners and everyone send me on a regular basis i compile all of these emails and dms and all that stuff and i make sure that it get these questions get answered because i answer people individually but then that doesn't help the collective if if this person has a question chances are there's ten thousand other people that have the same question so i'm really just trying to give you the information that you need right now so that you can get a, create a brand get a brand registered on amazon and start protecting yourself from all the shady folks who are trying to steal your ideas and hijack your listings. Just more protection is better. So first things first, I'm giving you a brief overview of what brand registry is on Amazon, what the requirements are, and why it is important to you. First and foremost, brand registry is for those who have a U.S. trademark. Now, they will honor some international trademarks, but it's complicated. Um, so it's like a as needed as case per case basis. So you, need, you would most likely need a U.S. trademark, a serial number. And once you have a trademarked brand then regardless what that brand is, you can register that serial number on Amazon. You do not need to wait until it's approved. You just have to apply and have the serial number. And then it will remain pending until your trademark goes through. So that's first things first you need to know. Once you file, you're able to file for brand registry on Amazon. So that requires a trademark. In order to trademark a product, 
They want to see it either in use or intent to use intend to use. So one of the suggestions I have there is to create a listing and offer a product for sale with the brand that you want to trademark. Now wait, Kristen, isn't that like the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken kind of thing, cart before the horse? Yes and no. Here's the deal. You can register, brand register on Amazon. That is with a full USPTO trademarked serial number brand you can register on Amazon. But there's another thing called brand approval that does not require a trademark. That means if you don't have a trademark, you can still bring your brand to the table. What I mean by this is say my friend here, um, my friend Tiffany has celestial scents candles. Okay, you can see this for my podcast listeners. You can't see that I'm holding up this beautiful, wonderful smelling candle that I absolutely love. These are my favorite candles. They're handmade, hand poured by a beautiful, wonderful lady, uh, celestialscents.com, go buy her candles. But uh, as my friend and also a business owner, Celestial Scents does not have a trademark, but she wants to bring her candles to Amazon. What she needs to do is get brand approval. So she has her trademark, again, I'm holding this up for you guys listening, can't see, but I'm holding up her candle here and it's got a nice logo on it right here. It's got all of her brand information, all the safety stuff that you you need on there and she can go to Amazon and get brand approval so you prove you show the packaging you show the product you say here's my brand here's my brand name uh, I want this I want to be able to sell my items on Amazon without brand registry it's still allowed it's called brand approval but they want proof they want to see your product they want to see the product with your name and logo on it um, so celestial sense here is a brand that she's created has a logo everything and it has to be your logo your packaging they want it to be professional quality so this you don't can't buy a stamp for ten dollars at staples or even at imprint or whatever and stamp your name on it they want permanently affixed professional looking packaging to make sure you actually have a brand so your brand could be xyz imports it could be um you know kristen's favorite things llc it doesn't matter the name of the brand. Number one, as long as it's not trademarked by somebody else um, is, is a key. So you don't have to have the registry first. You need brand approval first. Well, then what else? What are the other steps? What are the other steps? I know there's lots of steps. You have to have a brand to get brand approval. Now if you're saying I'm only doing wholesale bundles. I don't wanna create a brand. I'm not a private label company. Guess what? You kind of are. If you're creating wholesale bundles, you're creating a wholesale bundle brand AKA Kristen's favorite things is my bundle brand, right? So Kristen's favorite things as my bundle brand, I'm going to get brand approval with that. I'm going to have something printed or, or like, let's just call it mommy income, right? This is my mommy income brand. And I'm gonna register mommy income on Amazon as my selling brand. So what I need is to create a logo, which I have, you can see here. Um, this is my mommy income logo. And this is my poly bag that has my brand permanently affixed created on it. Now I can put my products inside of this poly bag and then get approval from Amazon to sell my brand. Now I have approval. That means I'm not registered yet, right? So I've got approval. Next step is to take that approval and create a listing with your product on Amazon. And whether you sell this item or not, whether it breaks you even, whether it's merchant fulfilled does not matter. Why you need this is because it's easier for your trademark to be approved once you have your item in use. So I have a couple of examples of this. I have three trademarks right now with the USPTO. My very first one was Mommy Income, of course. Um, my second trademark was one of my bundle brands and that was approved without a hiccup. It was really a strange name. There was no other, it's like an acronym. So there's no other competing marks. It doesn't cause any confusion. And we were already using the mark on some of our products that we have. So when they saw our listing that we, it was a specimen that you have to attach to your trademark application, we already had an Amazon listing. So we linked to the Amazon listing and the images and they're like, oh, these people are already using this brand. Much more likely to get approved if you're already using it in commerce, you're already selling products with this logo and this name on it. They, it's more, it's more credibility for approving the trademark, okay? Second trademark I filed. Same thing, I was already using it in commerce. I showed them the website, I showed them the product. They rejected it and said it was subjective. 
then I show I, I, I reapplied with a new specimen and I showed them, hey, I already have $50,000 of sales of this product. Please help me protect myself against everyone. And then after selling the product for a while, I, I the second time around with my trademark, um, I kept it open. It never like closed and was like officially denied. It was like a six month waiting period. And in during that six month waiting period, I'd submitted more specimens and they saw the sales reports and they're like, okay, this person actually is selling underneath this brand. We better let them be protected. So just recently after a long, long time, November of 2020, I think. <laughs> That was a long time. Oh, we finally got our, our trademark. So uh, that second one was the, actually that's our third one, I guess. Um, it was approved. So um, there's sometimes there's work involved in all of that, but needless to say, don't pick stuff that's subjective. When you're picking your brand name, pick something that's weird and bizarre. Um, like, but like uh, one of the examples they use on the USPTO website is like um, the bananas tires right? Because banana tires, banana tires, what does that mean? It's so odd and weird that like they honor that as a good trademark because it's, it doesn't like if you did rubber tires, like the, that's kind of descriptive and subjective and that the descriptive words, they don't allow to trademark. So it's gotta be something unique, different, uh, recognizable that doesn't cause any sort of customer confusion. So creating your brand, doesn't mean you're creating a brand for life that ever, that has to go on every single unit that you ever make. You're trying to get brand registry with your brand. Pick something generalized. So I sell everything from like baby blankets to grocery items to my private label toilet product that I have, right? So I wouldn't want something that's like Kristen's grocery store. Well, because I don't just sell grocery, I sell all kinds of stuff. So pick something that's general, generic, when I say generic or bizarre, like um, PTOS mercantile, like, I don't know, something very strange and different that, that doesn't make sense to anyone but you. Um, it, or if you're really creating a private label product and you want to use one of your brands that you have, say you're into organic makeup or, you know, you're making your own candles like my friend Tiffany at Celestial Scents. Um, seriously, like whatever that is, search it out, make your bundle brand because you don't have to be married to, you want everything to fall under your brand. So you don't have to do this twice. You don't want to create four or five different brands unless that's your goal is to have a different product lines and different brands. And you can register as many brands as you want. That gets costly and expensive, but if that's your goal, great. You know, the same rules apply to whether you're doing one brand or 10, you don't necessarily need all different brands. If you create the brand that you a brand that's generic, a brand that is generalized so that it doesn't pigeonhole you into one category. So brand approval, get a listing out there. Then you have to create your, your custom packaging before you can get brand approval. So say you pick Kristen's favorite things as your brand. Now I'm going to have to go get packaging, a box, a poly bag, something that's going to cost some money, maybe even 50 bucks to get a custom package that's a sample that you can then submit to Amazon. Here's the deal. This is new as of right now. The, then the last two weeks, Amazon is fully rejecting minuscule packaging. If you're, if you have a brown cardboard box with, it looks like one little tiny sticker on it, they're not going to approve your packaging and they have the right to do that. Unfortunately, they don't have crystal clear guidelines and or visual examples of what's acceptable and what's not. But I've seen some of my clients be rejected because they bought stickers and put stickers on a brown cardboard box and then said, this is my logo. Well, technically speaking, they want, they're looking, even though they don't say this in their policy, I will tell you, this is what they're looking for. They're looking for professional looking packaging, retail ready almost. When I say almost, it's because almost retail ready means they want you to have your brand, your logo, and then they want manufacturing information on it. Just like every single retail package has to show you some sort of contact information manufactured by uh, who and where, and then some sort of contact. So whether that's an email, whether that's an address, or whether that's a phone number, you must have contact information and origin information on your packaging. This is not written in their requirements, but I know that that's what they're looking for. So make sure that your packaging not only has your logo and name and spelled identically 
to your trademark or what you plan to trademark and then a manufactured by or manufactured in so manufactured by in china or in assembled in the united states manufactured in wherever us um and then a contact information so that's either a website a phone number an email address or a, a actual physical address and those are like usually laws I, I i'm i'm not a lawyer so i'm saying that here but i know that there's retail packaging laws where certain things have to have certain things on them i believe the manufacturing information and contact information of one point of contact is required by law in retail <clears throat> If someone has a more or different or better information, reach out to me. I'll interview you on the podcast so we can get better information. But that is my minuscule understanding of what is required on retail packaging. Amazon's looking for that. So they want it to look like a retail package. So go to any store, pick up a package and look, here's a package of G2, G2 pens. These are, the, these are the best pens on the planet. Pilot G2 premium limited edition colors, of course, I hear. But look at this packaging. Although it doesn't have to cost a lot of money, it is very sturdy. It has branding and full color on every side in the back is just black and white. But again, you can see here manufacture information right there as well. So this says Pilot Corporation of America, Jacksonville, Florida, made in Japan, pilotpen.us. So that's all you really need to have on there. Plus, if you have a barcode, great. If you don't, that's fine too. You actually don't have to have a UPC. However, if you do decide to eventually have a UPC and you have that printed on your packaging, it's even better and it has more approval. But it's not required at this time to have a UPC or a GTIN on your product. So again, let's go over the steps. Number one, create a brand for your bundles or brand for whatever it is you're doing, a generalized generic brand that multiple categories can approve. Then you need your logo and have that logo and or name printed on your packaging and get a sample package. Then apply for brand approval. And then you can show them your packaging that you have. And then you can get a G10 exemption if you don't have a UPC code. And then you list your product. Once your product is listed, apply for your trademark and then get your serial number and apply for brand registry, okay? Those are the steps. Now, let's talk about brand registry because then once you have brand registry, there's some confusion on what it does and what it doesn't do and all these types of things. So I'm gonna go through all these questions that people have sent and then hopefully this answers a lot of what you have and you can go forward with brand registry. I think there's so many benefits to it. Um, you're protected, you have a legitimate brand, people look at you more legitimately once you're brand registered, you've got A plus content, you can do so many things. So. Here's the questions. Would it be considered a fixed packaging to have a poly bag with your logo and brand fixated on it? So for example, if I'm selling three different rice cake flavors, is having the three rice cakes in the poly bag branded good enough? Yes, yes it is. However, making sure that that poly bag is not a sticker or a stamp, but you're actually having it fully printed on the packaging. So making sure that you spend the money printing the packaging and it's not like you're buying some stickers, although stickers are fine for other things and later on down the road. And I'll can kind of explain, I explain that in the wholesale bundle system in the brand registry training. Um, okay, should, should we list the product on Amazon before we get the trademark or brand registry? Yes, because you're using it in commerce, it's more likely to get approved. So list your bundle on Amazon first, or even what I consider a dummy bundle. Did you know that it's okay to list something that you're actually, that you might only have one of, you know, just like a test listing. It's like a dummy listing that no one probably will buy, but you're just doing it for practice and you can end it at any time. That's a real thing. So if you wanted to sell, like to get approval for brand registry for um, Amazon, I just listed like my mommy income 15 minute hustle chart. It's got my brand on it. It says mommy income on it. They instantly approved it. So even printing something and laminating it and then putting it out there as a product, like the 15 minute hustle chart <laughs> is still approved on Amazon. Your brand doesn't have to be a global household name to be a brand. It simply is a brand. Mommy Income is a very, very small brand. Not everybody knows about it or cares about it, but it's still available on Amazon. So um, it's one of those things that it doesn't have to mean anything to anyone else. It just has to pass the requirements. So list it on Amazon, then file for your brand registry or your, your trademark so that you can use the in use. 
You cannot say your item is in use if you can't prove that it's in use. If you don't have a listing on eBay or Amazon or Facebook Marketplace or your own website with your brand name and your logo on it, it's not in use. So please make it in use. You don't have to, by the way, I already said that, but it makes it a lot easier to get approved for your trademark if you're already using it in commerce. Okay, another question here. I want to know, since I'm just starting with the wholesale bundles and brand approval trademark, experience should i first apply for a trademark is that something you recommend and while i have this trademark do i need to wait for it to be approved no you do not first of all i just gave you the steps of what you need to do first second third but then file the trademark as soon as you are ready as soon as you have your specimen as soon as you can prove to them that you have a brand and what the name is and how you're using it file because once you have the serial number you don't have to wait until it's actually approved which takes almost a year you don't have to wait a year file your application pick your class of products get your serial number register it on amazon okay what is this next question if i if i am brand registered do i have to put all of my bundles under the registered brand name no actually you don't um so that's a great question once you have a brand registered on amazon you can pick multiple brands that you have to use so like i have three different brands registered on amazon and depending on what i'm listing i you i pick the different brands so there's one that's our private label brand that was just approved. And so we only sell those items under that brand. But then we also have another brand that we use for everything else. So you don't, and once you're listed in the brand registry, you don't have to register everything with that brand. That means that, okay, it says brand registry is named under ABC, but I pull, but I put a bundle out there that's now one, two, three. I'm confused because my business name on Amazon is my LLC. So when I put a bundle, it goes under my LLC or my brand name. No. Your business name and store name on Amazon does not have to be the brand name that you use. So I could have Kristen's favorite things, but then under that, I, I carry multiple brands that are registered. So with the multiple brands that are registered, um, it's it gives you options to list on multiple. So I do have a client that has a couple of brands registered, and one of them is for some of her subscription type boxes and the other ones are for like pet supplies and things like that. So because of that, you can have multiple brand registered names and have multiple brands registered under your dashboard. You could have 10, you could have 50. Some some people are managing big brands and they have all, they, they're Amazon account managers for big brands like even Nike and they would have multiple brands under their account. So yes, you can have multiple brands and you don't have to list everything under there. So when you're retail arbitrage, if you're still doing arbitrage or that's something that you've been doing and you're trying to transition into bundling or private label or anything that is going to require a trademark you can still list you don't have to have separate accounts you can list your arbitrage items your wholesale items your brand registered items your private label items all in one store all in one Amazon account. And then your branded items will be able to have A plus content on them. So that's something that can help with brand registry. But your other items, if you're still doing a little bit of arbitrage, it'll be fine. It's not going to mess with anything that you have. So it's really okay. Okay, another question here is um, the G10 approval. So once you register for your brand on Amazon and your brand registered, you need to file for your G10 exemption. This is if you don't have UPC codes for your items, you need to brand register. You need to um, file for a G10 exemption. And all you need to do is pick your brand name under G10 exemption and pick the category. And it should be instantly approved because you're brand registered. Because you took the step of getting a government entity to approve your trademark, you have instant credibility with Amazon. So because of that, they are easily approving G10 exemptions for brand registered folks. It's a little bit harder when you don't have brand registry. Their restrictions are a little bit more tight. But you don't have to, you need, if you don't have UPC codes for your bundles or for your products, then you can file for a G10 exemption and underneath your brand. It must be spelled identically. Sometimes they're instantly approved. Sometimes they take um, a while, but for the most part, Get your G10 exemption, then you don't have to use a product ID, aka a G10, for your products. As long as you're using your brand registered name and spelling it identically, it means to say if you capitalize the first and last letter, that's what it needs to look like on Amazon. So just be aware of that. Also, brand registry. If you don't have brand registry yet, 
but you plan to apply for that trademark. List all of your items underneath that brand approval brand now so that once you get brand registry, you can transfer those over. If they're not spelled identically and under the actual brand registry name, you cannot transfer old listings to new brand registry. It has to match identically, which most people don't do because they don't know what they're actually going to trademark until later on. So if you have your idea in mind, mine's mommy income, obviously. So if I'm going to do a mommy income listing, I want to list it as mommy income now, then get the trademark, then get the brand registry, and then um, migrate all of my branded listings to my brand registry. So if you already have an intent for a trademark, then I would suggest listing stuff in that bundle from, or in that category and with that name before you even get your brand registry because then your listings will transfer over. You can't change a brand after the fact. So even if you're, you're you say you have thousands of listings today and you brand register tomorrow under a different brand name, you can't bring those thousands of listings into your new brand registry unless all of the brand names match identically with your brand registered name. I know all is information. So just consider that if you're if you have a brand name in mind and you're going to trademark it start using your listings with that brand name now so that they translate over okay next question i'm selling a product bundle in my custom branded packaging with my brand name on it however our trademark is still pending even though we enrolled in brand registry there's a hijacker on one of our listings selling the same product without the branded packaging. I have performed a test buy and noticed that one of the items in the bundle is different than what I'm offering. I want to make a complaint to Amazon. I tried to contact them, but they aren't taking any action. What do I do? Well, first of all, file the complaint again and say this, uh, it, report it as not, it's not the, uh, the item is mismatched. If you're in brand registry, report a violation. So if you have your brand registered with Amazon and you're under the registry dashboard, there is a tab, report a violation. They are violating your trademark even though it's pending. Pending means that no one else can claim that brand name until it is finished. So you can't, but they can't, but they also can't use it. So it's my understanding that they can't use it. Now enforcement is different between the pending and regular. However, that's neither here nor there when it comes to Amazon. They are violating your current pending trademark by not including your packaging. So report it as a violation. They're violating your trademark by having something significantly different than yours. They're representing you and your brand without representing you and your brand properly. They are violating your trademark and you need to open the case or file a violation, report a violation for them. And Amazon will eventually take action because especially if you're doing it through the brand registry dashboard report the violation and keep doing so until your hijacker leaves also take pictures and images of the test buy that you purchased that is not like yours and does not have your you know have them side by side this is my genuine mommy income product here is the knockoff and have pictures of that okay um question about brand registry i'm thinking of applying for my first bundle that does not belong to the class of goods that i'm trademarked for under the uspto seem to have everything else in order. Do you think Amazon will approve my application? Okay, let's talk about class of goods. Class of goods is when you file for your trademark, you have to pick a class, aka a category of where your product fits in. Now, that is for the USPTO's information. Amazon does not care if you're registered in the uh, class of products that are paper goods or that are textiles or whatever else. They get a serial number, they verify that this has indeed been registered, and now you can sell any product on Amazon with that trademark and that brand registry. So if you are registered in baby goods or textiles, okay, so say your, your class of goods under your trademark is textiles. On Amazon, you can still sell your trademarked products in paper goods or baby products or whatever else. You do not have to have a separate class for every single product that you are registering for Amazon, okay? Now, when I say for Amazon, it's because if you were out into the world creating this wonderful, amazing brand and you 
created a product line that say um, textiles, clothing, something like that. And then you wanted to create backpacks that are um, have your logo and brand name on them and you want it protected. Unless you file for an extra class for that and augment your original application, you can't enforce your trademark for the backpack off of Amazon. On Amazon, it does not matter. If someone's trying to use your trademark and your brand registry name and they don't have your packaging and your logo, they are violating your trademark and you can report that. So you don't have to file for every single class. Also, once you file your trademark, you can't go back and like add more classes. You have to reapply. So it's something that if you if you think you have to apply for all these classes on the USPTO, it's not required or necessary. You want to choose the main one that you're going for now. Now, another way to register your brand in a class that covers all the things is registering it as a service. That's what I did. I registered my mommy income brand as a service provider. So I'm providing a service. What is my service? My service for Amazon, for products that I'm selling on Amazon, my service is I create gift baskets. I curate gift boxes and gift baskets for my brand. And so I am not necessarily manufacturing individual products. I'm, I'm a service-based uh, trademark. And my trademark is my mommy income services provide services for people. My service is that I create bundles and put them on Amazon and I'm not trademarking the products in the bundle. I'm, create, I'm trademarking my services. My time, effort, and energy to curate these boxes, gather the items and put them into a box is a service I provide, okay? So I'm not trademarking the Nike sandals or the, the whatever it is that's in my box. I'm actually just trademarking my services. Kristen's favorite things, AKA mommy income, whatever it is, is a service. So pick a class that's a service for your gift baskets and it covers a multitude of categories when you do that. So that was the suggestion I took from a trademark attorney before I filed. And that basically says this covers all your bases. So instead of picking a specific class for product, pick a category, a class of uh, class of goods as a service provider provider. And then your the service you're providing is curating special gift baskets and boxes for your clientele. Um, and so that's how you 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 can kind of um, not worry about the actual products, but the service is what you're protecting your brain power, your actual creative juice that you're putting into, um, creating your bundle. That's the, what you're protecting rather than the actual units and the item itself. It's your brand. Your brand is you're a bundle creator. <laughs> so that's the whole idea there is you're, you're protecting the service, not necessarily the products that are in there. So it, it really helps to have that clarification so that you don't have to worry about picking a specific class of product. Okay, will I be able to continue my arbitrage business as I transition into branding and wholesale bundles? Yes, yes, you can still do that without without an extra account or anything like that. You can do wholesale, private label, all the different things in the same Amazon account and it's not a problem. Okay, here is another question about class. Let's see. How are people that sell bundles in multiple product categories picking a class of goods? Oh yeah, I just um I just explained that one too. That was kind of the last one of the last questions that we have here. Um so basically when it comes to picking a class for your registry, that's when you um decide that you're going to pick maybe a service instead of a specific class of products as then you're protecting yourself and your creativity and your service that you're providing because that's really what it is we're not providing brand new products necessarily we're curating the best products for our customers and that is a service that we provide and our services are what we're protecting so that would be my suggestion there um, these are just the top questions that i've had about brand registry you can always reach out into the mommy income facebook group and ask some more questions and of course if you want the full in-depth how to step-by-step -step training including video demos and tutorials on how to get this done for yourself mommyincome.com forward slash system get the wholesale bundle system comes with the brand registry training and you will be all set to register your brand and you know what if you've already got a logo and idea, you could have this, you could have a serial number and be brand registered by the end of this week. No joke. If you've got your duckies in a row, you can file and get your your trademark serial number same day. 
You don't have to get approval. You can file for it same day and get a serial number, get brand registry. You can find your products. Um, also, there's a, below this video, there's going to be some links to some resources. Um, mommyincome.com forward slash sticker mule. Um, that's something that can get these poly bags that I've been showing you um, with your logo printed on them. Also for imprint or print runner or Oh gosh, there's so go to my resource page and look at custom packaging. Um, I have a lot of custom packaging resources. Oh, did you know there's training in the wholesale bundle system about custom packaging? Who knew? Did you know it's so complete? <laughs> yes, because I want you to succeed. That's why providing you all the training that you need. So you have all the shortcuts. That's what you need. Mommyincome.com forward slash system and go to my website and look at the resource page to see what other um, resources that you need for your brand registry. Y'all. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. Listen to some other person. I appreciate you listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, drop into my DMs, put a, put a review out there, give us some stars, something like that. If you come back every week and you listen and you like these episodes, I need to hear from you. I need to know that you're listening and that you want to hear more content, you know, because this is time and energy, right? So I don't want to waste yours or mine. Let me know what you want to learn about. Let me know that you're listening and that you appreciate it. And I would love to continue giving you more support and more love and more info to help you be more successful. So See y'all same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.